Number 14, we must enhance the competitiveness of the export of coffee to the EAC as is necessary to enhance trade facilitation and other technical and trade policy reforms both regionally and nationally. And the EU has graciously offered to work with us as EABC to help to promote these regional value chains and in particular on coffee. So those discussions are forthcoming. Number 15, recognize that the private sector is the driver of the EAC integration and there is need to re-examine the wording and purpose of observer status of EABC at the EAC level with a view of becoming a true partner. And the point here, Waziri, is we say this is private sector led, yet the private sector is actually an observer. We are leading, but we are sitting in the co-driver seat or maybe even the back seat if we're lucky to be in the bus at all. But we appreciate the recent invitations to participate even in this event and with the Council of Ministers and even the invitation to participate at the Heads of State Summit. It is considered an invitation, but at the same time, given our charter, it is actually a right. And so we fully intend to take up that right and sit at the big boys and girls table. Number 15. I think we covered that number 16. There's need to have structured and thematic business engagements between the public and private sector that are sustainable in nature to address trade and investment issues. Sustainable in nature really is driven by our behavior. And one of the comments that was made today is we must have follow through. So sustainability is not necessarily driven just by the topic, but it's really driven by the commitment and the intention and the behaviors that we have, that once we address an issue, we just don't put it on the table and leave, but we continue to engage until it is complete. Number 17, noting the role of public-private partnerships in the economic development of the EAC region, there is the need of, for creation of special purpose vehicles to allow investors to inject money. And this really was highlighted in the discussion this morning, Waziri, when we talked about PPPs. It's a wonderful term. Everybody uses it. Nobody can find one that is in place. And I think the whole architecture of PPPs needs to be uh, reviewed. And if we can create special purpose vehicles, as was recommended this morning, where local and foreign investors can invest in an SPV, that is driving a PPP, then we have a better chance of, they, of them taking off and we can have more affordable development in the region. So with that, Minister, those are the 17 resolutions that the uh, very cohesive and uh, in many cases aggressive teams came up with over the last two days and we present those for your uh, not only noting but also for your signature of acceptance that uh, we have presented them to you and you have heard them. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there? Kwa ni mwenyekiti wa baraza la wafanyabiashara Afrika Mashariki na kielezea basi kati ya mambo 17 ambayo yameafikia kutokana na mkutano huu wa siku mbili. Na kati ya mambo machache aliyozungumzia ni kuhusiana na nchi wanachama kuangalia sheria za kodi lakini pia kuiuza Afrika Mashariki nje au kimataifa okay. kama sehemu moja kwa mwekezaji kuweza kuja. Tuendelee kumsikiliza. Any comments from the crowd? But secondly, uh, the ministers and high-level dignitaries are here from Uganda and Rwanda and South Sudan and will also invite their participation as well. I think I, I must also mention a comment that was not here or a sentiment that was not here. And it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one politically. But uh, it was mentioned frequently and it is really the concept of the coalition of the willing. We have a very um, um, aggressive group of 
business people who want to expand and we feel that in many cases things are being held back so we want to have um, a way forward when uh, when we have challenges and things getting implemented and so uh, that's not clear how that is going to be resolved in terms of how we move forward um, Very good. Okay. I'll take two. Naam sasa mwenyekiti huyu wa baraza la wafanyabiashara Afrika Mashariki ametoa fursa kwa maoni kutoka kwa washiriki kutoka katika taasisi mbalimbali za sekta binafsi wanaoshiriki katika mkutano huu na wao wanachangia uh, community business driven and a people driven i have perused through and that the people driven is not there people driven okay Changia juu ile pita amegusia yale ambayo siku ya jana ile rasmi alizungumza kuhusu kuwa na biashara ambayo inatazama maendeleo ya watu. Tumsikilize mchangiaji mwingine aliyeko hapa. Thank you, thanks chairman for the recommendations. It's perfect. But I have seen a missing link somewhere where this the word SMEs. We are leaving the mabogo out. It should be M S E, not S M E, because I believe a uh, great percent of the business players here are either medium, uh, small, and medium. So we are leaving the mama boga out. Okay. Yeah. Point well taken. Yes. Mchanga yele pita huyo amekumbusha kumba pamoja na wafanyabiashara wakubwa walioko hapa watu wafanyabiashara wadogo pia wanahitaji kuwasilishwa katika mazimio 17 ya mkutano huu. Number 5. Yeah. Can we project number 5? Who's a projector here? Uh, th thank you. Uh, I think uh, I appreciate this document but as i appreciate it my appeal is just one to say that whatever we have documented are recognized so, so that it doesn't become just a matter of sitting and uh, making resolutions for example as i come from uganda more especially in the transport department we have a resolution which has been made several times of the road user fees in Tanzania where Ugandan trucks are charged 500 US dollars Rwandese are charged 150 and Burundi are charged 150 we have made this resolution several times but nothing is implemented this is your request that whatever we have documented here let it be respected thank you thank you na mchangaji lepita yeye amegusia kuhusiana na kwamba maazimio haya yaweze basi kuingizwa katika sera za nchi husika ili yaweze kuheshimiwa tuendelee kusikiliza baadhi ya wachangaji paragraph yep yeah yes on the official i thought the professor kabodi opened the seminar on behalf of his excellency the president isn't it important for that to be captured yes thank you thank you let's capture that excuse me Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Francis Jesirinya from Private Sector Foundation in Uganda. Uh, we seem to have uh, been advised by the, His Excellency, the Ambassador of Tanzania to, sorry, Ambassador of EU to Tanzania, that uh, they normally in the EU they have incorporated a dispute mechanism. I don't see it here. It seems as if we is something that we appreciated. Okay. Thank you. We have a question here. Shall we go over there?
Mtazamaji kama unavyojionea katika televisheni yako kinachoendelea hapa kutoka ukumbi wa Grand Melia ni baadhi ya washiriki wa mkutano huu wa siku mbili wa sekta binafsi wakitoa maoni yao kuhusiana na yale yaliyotokea katika mkutano huu na hususan matokeo ya mkutano huu. Baadhi wanachangia masuala mbalimbali hususan mambo kumi na saba ambayo yameweza E, kuwasilishwa mchana huu leo na mwenyekiti wa baraza hili la Afrika Mashariki la biashara Nicholas Nesbit kama unavyojionea baadhi ya maadhimio yaliyo ainishwa katika mkutano huu ni pamoja na nchi wanachama kuwa na sera za pamoja tusikilize challenges when it comes to access to credit when it comes to even knowing information i was happy that in kigali recently there was the launch of the 50 million women speak but we need really to get even the women know that this opportunity is there so i just wanted to recommend that with the very good initiatives you have you strengthen the participation of women in business pull out those who are even in the formal sector to make them formal so that the billions they were making in the region we can triple i'm sure when we add women and indeed even the youth because these are the future leaders of our community so this one should be taken as a resolution thank you thank you uh, thank you very much uh, moderator my name is paul msamali i'm a member of iyala in the resolutions i personally feel that uh, we should include one important resolution because it came from uh, the demand of the private sector and the audience that uh, urging iyala east african legislative assembly to fast track laws that are, that are, will help to harmonize the various laws that distort trade in the community so i think the technical team if i am supported should find a way of including that resolution urging yala members such that when if the council have not sponsored bills then yala can still come with private members bills that are aimed at fast tracking and facilitating trade in the community for example there was somebody who was proposing that we have issues to do with the standards and we needed an apex law on standards and iyala i believe is well positioned to do that so i beg to submit thank you okay we'll stay on that side we'll those do those two and then we'll start moving back this way yeah hello my name is theo uh there's an aspect that i wanted to bring out earlier but i didn't find an opportunity to the issue of language i think you have a, a language barrier swahili is an official language in tanzania we also have burundi that has french but uh, i don't think that aspect has been taken into consideration so you can see that even all the communication you've had in this event is in english so going forward i'm thinking that that should be looked into thank you very much Thank you, moderator. I'm uh, Prudence, the proprietor of Okay Roma, the, the producer of the uh, best wine you were taking, enjoying yesterday. That was my offer. <laughs> Mine is a compliment. Since the summit started, I was with you, but I was not with you. Because my products were being hid. I was in Nairobi. I, co I complained. Things improved a bit, but now when I decided to come with my truck to this summit, I expected things to move smoothly. Though take precaution, it left on Tuesday, but it reached here yesterday evening. So when you were saying here things are okay, I was not with you. <laughs> and it is not even among the summaries you are making for this summit. You were saying things are okay, my, my, my truck was being held on different borders. Since Monday, 
Bera is a, a, a known brand. No, who doesn't know Bera wine? Bera G is here. If we, I can suffer that way, how about others? It is discouraging other traders who want to trade in East Africa. <laughs> others are, are saying it is because of my woman. Men are suffering more. <laughs> At least there is a bit of sympathy that this, is, this will make her pass. It takes two days to pass one border to another. Yesterday, somebody had to drive from here to this Tanzanian border to clear my things. So we'll, we'll do something about it. I'm very much ready to trade in East Africa, but those are the barriers. We have attended uh, these barriers in Uganda, in Nairobi. Now I thought things are very smooth now, but they are more complicated. So. Thank you. And that's a very real live example. You know, how, how long are we going to keep putting up with this? Right? So, who's going to fix it? Or like, how's this going to get fixed? <laughs> There's an invitation to go to South Sudan, which is part of East Africa because there are no barriers going north. Okay, we'll come this way. Thank you, Chairman. Um, mine is to reassure Bella Wine and the general uh, public or private sector people attending uh, the summit. I think over time we've gotten used to the public sector method of writing, we should, we observe. If you have been in summits, a lot of wording is the summit observed. But the summit doesn't know we shall do on this day, who will do, who will evaluate, when we shall receive the results. So in light of that, uh, only the Chair of the Council of Ministers, I want to request that we task ourselves with the private sector and the Secretariat and the Chair that we accompany this document with an action paper, clearly showing when, by who, and when we shall evaluate the results. I thank you. And, and I think Dennis brought up a very good point. Because I'm sure many people here do not actually know how these laws are supposed to get changed. Does it go to the Council of Ministers or does it go straight to IALA? Does it depend? Who is responsible for doing it and exactly by when? Because we keep saying exactly as he said. And, and the point being raised by Dr. Waturi here is and the consequences of not getting it done. Uh, compliance. Yes. And as a result, uh, nothing happens. And we don't take it seriously and we'll meet next week or a year from now and we'll still be in the same place because yeah. there are no consequences. There are consequences for the private sector. And that lady there has demonstrated those consequences and what that costs us as a business. But there are no consequences for the public sector. Yeah, no consequences for non-conformance, no consequences for non-performance. Mr. Shaw. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I think, um, like Dennis said, these are resolutions that are very soft. And I think a lot of us are hard hit by the reality on the ground. And I think uh, it's high time, um, with due respect to all the ministers, it's high time we call a spade a spade. <laughs> EAC is a fantastic opportunity for everyone in EAC for the 170 million people in ESC. I think there's no doubt about that. But the question is, the way we're going right now, if we're going to spend another X number of years doing the same thing again and again, we're not going to get different results. We are all expecting, correct me if I'm wrong, we're all expecting these issues. These are very generic. I'd like to take you to the, the fourth industrial revolution. Just move to that resolution. Just to highlight what, what we should be looking at and how we should be looking at it. Um, the one, yeah, that's, it's just gone, just gone, up there. Just take it to the top, take it up. Take it up so everybody can read. I don't know who's controlling this. There you go. So, uh, Chairman, with your permission, the East African region should adopt emerging fourth industrial revolution technologies such as robotics, blockchain, and artificial intelligence, AI, Internet of Things to reduce costs and expand their services globally. If I was a minister looking at this, I'm saying, who's stopping you? Nobody is stopping us from doing this. The key question is, from this, if we say adopt this, what's 
stopping us today from really moving fast on this one? Are there laws required that require us to say, make it duty free, allow it? Because today we go to Google, we go, all our data is getting, getting uploaded onto, onto the internet, onto clouds. This is where we need to bring up action plan. I think I agree with Dennis to say from here, we develop a very clear action plan which is smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and time bound. So that if we don't do this, if July 2020 we're going to get ACFTA going live, those of us who have signed on to the African continental free trade area are going to go live, we're going to be in trouble. So I'm just saying We've got to get that pressure on to say, let's make sure we make sure East Africa becomes the role model to implement ACFTA. So this is what my request is. And I think, Chairman, with due respect, this is a good document, but an action plan that is detailed, bringing out detailed issues that people have. In fact, we should even have an issue list coming out. So we gather all the issues that are there, and everybody has issues, delays or whatever it is. And these are short-term issues. But long-term fixes are also required, and short-term fixes also required. So that's my request that the approach that we make is to, to articulate here exactly what are we are suggesting. Because by suggesting such generic stuff, the minister would actually say, done, done, done. We have no problem with it. You say special, they say I direct you to do this. The second is special economic zones. Everybody's doing it. Nobody's saying no. The question is, how is this going to help us? Because special economic zones within ESC are not viable. Because when you are in ESC countries, you are not exporting to each, each country. Therefore, I think the re resolutions should be much more specific. However, it's captured what we've discussed. But I think we need to go deep down onto detail, the granular level. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, intervention. And, and I think that since this is a two-way street, it would be very important to understand even what the ministers are working on because when they disappear and they go and do what they do, if it's affecting us, it would be very important to also get a readout from the ministers. This is what we're working on and this is where we are. And I don't know how we're getting that two-way street back because we're all in this together. Um, just one thing that I would like to add to what Vimal Shah said is, well, this is very good. It's a laundry list of 17 things. I think on top of us creating the action plan, we need to be brutal with it and select what are the top three or top five things that truly, truly will move the dial. And then we go for those things because then when we come back here in a year's time or whatever time it is, we can go back to those five things and say, what are those five things? We're all business people here. Any time that somebody is going to come and bring you a business proposal, you normally ask them, what's the return on investment? What's the size of price? Okay? So for any of these things that we choose to do, I think we have the wherewithal in this room to determine what's the size of price. How big is this thing? Such that if we do it, it will impact us and impact us big time. So just to add on to that, let's prioritize this. We should not present a list of 17 issues. We should present three issues or five issues that we believe are important and the importance needs to be driven on impact on society, which is driven by the size of price, not a whole list of 17 things. And that's a very good, that's a very important point. I think, I think one of the things that we have to get to, even as private sector and government in this region, is how do we get to a level where we're communicating in a way that drives positive outcomes because spending a lot of time around government delivering things there are ways of speaking shoulds enables observed there's that culture so it's a question of how we're going to break that culture to get something that's more productive but a good point Mr. Obama speaking of one who's spoken to government a lot do you have a microphone Uh, Chairman, mine is, I think, a very simple one. I'd just like to add to these resolutions a final one that actually sets up an action group of nominated ministers and nominated members of the EABC who specifically will be charged to action. At the moment, we're saying EABC will take it up and they'll go and discuss with the ESC and there'll some action take place 
eventually. But I think we need arising from here, within the resolutions that are coming out, a final one that actually sets up a joint committee which will report back to us. And the EADC will say we have three people, not that observer status that we talk about in there. And then the Council of Ministers will say we have three or four people from the ELA and, uh, and also from the Council of Ministers who will be charged with the responsibility of making the resolutions happen. Thank you. Thank you. Good point. Okay. Done. Uh, thank you, moderator. Um, from yesterday, you have raised the, uh, an issue of uh, sensitization of our citizens on the integration process. But uh, from the recommendations you have there, I don't see, I have not seen the recommendation related to the sensitization. As far as we are talking about integration, we have uh, people centered, we have people driving in the, in the private sector driving. We can't uh, expect it to go far if our people are not sensitized and know the regulations and the policies we have uh, so that you'll be able to follow. So I have not seen any uh, recommendation related to uh, sensitization. Thank you. Okay. That's, that's a good point because I think what was mentioned earlier is people don't even know about East African community and what it does. Yes. Yes, Chairman. Yes, sorry. No, I was just saying that uh, Mr. TRA is going to make a comment shortly. Bon. Excusez-moi, je suis du Burundi. On ne parle pas anglais au Burundi. Alors, je ne sais pas s'il y a quelqu'un qui pourrait traduire un peu ce que je veux dire. Is there anyone who can translate what he is saying oui, parce que, or what um, is being said? Nous sommes ici depuis hier. On a suivi tout ce qui a été exposé là-bas. Est-ce que vous pouvez recommencer, monsieur? Uh, recommencer. Je vous fais la traduction. Bon, nous sommes ici depuis hier. On a suivi toutes les sessions qui ont été exposées là-bas. We've been here since yesterday and you have followed all the presentations that have been made. Et maintenant nous arrivons euh, en conclusion, nous avons un document and qui devrait être signé et qui va engager euh, tous les membres de la, de la communauté de, de l'EAC. So now we're at the end of this uh, event and you're just about to sign to a document that obviously will commit and engage all the members of uh, the East African community. J'aimerais sur ce que l'un des participants vient de dire ici, c'est que nous avons une barrière non moins importante que la langue. One of the particip participants just said that we have a language barrier. Je ne voudrais pas entrer dans les détails de tout ce qui a été fait parce qu'on a suivi. Mais comme nous sommes ici et que nous avons cette, ce problème de, de, de langue, C'est un document, comme je viens de le dire, qui va engager tous les membres de la, de la communauté. So clearly, uh, we're at the end of this very important uh, event, and we have a document that is in English. You notice that this should also involve or uh, engage all the members of the community. Je ne sais pas comment le, dans la communauté travaille, la langue de travail, je, ça, je ne peux pas entrer dedans. Mais de toute façon, je voudrais savoir si ce document qui va engager tous les membres de la communauté, qui est en anglais. C'est vrai, on a suivi, mais on ne peut pas tout, euh, tout, tout suivre là-bas. Est-ce yes, qu'il y a so. moyen, dans vos pratiques, il y a moyen de traduire ça en français pour que nous qui sommes ici, qui, ont représenté, qui, qui, qui avons représenté d'une manière okay. ou d'une autre nos, nos yeah. pays, pour qu'on puisse, avoir, pour, pour, pour qu puisse en, avoir un document que nous comprenons aussi bien que tout le monde, pour que nous ayons une, une compréhension commune sur la chose qui va engager la, toute la communauté en okay. voilà. D'accord. Merci. So, obviously, we need Monsieur. to have uh, 
a document that can be understood uh, by everyone so that we all have or we are on the same page about the issues raised. So this document is in English. Is it possible to have it translated so that then, or, or can you find ways of ensuring that going forward, we also have a way that uh, such documents can be translated? That is the only way we can move together because language is a barrier. Thank you very much. Okay, d'accord. On va traduire uh, tous les documents. Merci. Okay. All right. We we we're just going to take a, f a few a few more hands, and then uh, okay. Let's go down the middle here, lady in blue, and uh, over here, and then we'll we'll stop. Hello. Can I, chairman? I have one uh, thing I want to make. I think there is one recommendation which needs to be also included is about. Uh, the enhancement of academia and the private sector. We talked about a uh, research department in the, private, in the private sector. We are talking about uh, Internet of Things. And this happens because academia exists. I think this is the reason why maybe academia has been invited also. So I think this resolution should be also taken into account because academia provides knowledge, innovation, technology, and also come up with a uh, you know, apply the research that can help the children make us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. One more, please. Yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Adalbert, and I'm from Burundi. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, there is just one recommendation that I would like to add to all of those recommendations that have been put there, and it's about public and private sector partnership. Many times, as we see, public and private sector are taking each other, are competitors, but not partners. So I suggest that if there could be a document like a draft that can be uh, in each domain, economic domain, that can be drafted at EAC level of, part of public, and per uh, public and private sector, uh, public and, no, I'm sorry, public and private partnership document that can be drafted at EAC level and that can be given to each partner state and make sure that that document has been, uh, will be implemented. I think it will be better if we try to focus on each domain of economic sector. Because sometimes you will see uh, a, do a, a, a government that, uh, that suggests something which is really against the private sector growth. So please, if possible, let's put in place, let's propose at least a document in each economic sector that can be as a draft of public-private partnership and make sure that the document is implemented in each partner state. I submit, Chair. Okay. The lady in blue. Good afternoon. I'd like to support the person who just talked about academia, linking academia with what is happening in our region. We've kind of like delineated the two, and it is important that we integrate the academia in this particular sector. Some lady actually mentioned that we don't have a dedicated uh, research uh, group or institute that can do it, but we have very strong institutions within the respective countries that we're talking about here, and we have great people with potential minds. We have Dr. Nje here, we have, we have Professor Nje here, we, do, we have Dr. Wini, we have Professor Palamaganda from uh, uh, Tanzania, and these are great minds that are waiting to be tapped into. That is number one. Number two, we can think of zoning, going down, like mapping out sections, trying to find out what the issues are, which processes are which do we have in each section of the countries that is hindering 
quick movement which can actually be undertaken by the respective institutions and how can we review the systems within each respective country through of course the same institutions and improve them we narrow down into the respective countries see what the issues are recommend and follow up with the task force that has been mentioned thank you so much thank you and one of the resolutions that came out of our board meeting uh, two days ago was that we were going to create an electronic platform that would enable all of the members to engage with their specific issues so that we get a constant stream. But let me also say, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the way these things get resolved is through participation, not through talking. So you'll find that as you act as an association, whether it's EA EABC or PSF in whichever country, a lot of people want something to get done, but they're never there to show up to actually get it done. So let me invite you to all participate in this work and all of these ideas and not throw it across the wall for somebody to get it done because nobody is going to really pick it up and there is not enough resources in any of these organizations to solve everything. So that's just an invitation. If you want to get something fixed, raise your hand, roll up your sleeves, pick up a hammer or a pen and come and help get it done. Okay. Uh, Honorable Minister. Some of us have been organizers of masses for all our life. And I would suggest that uh, when you come to such a conference, you, you demarcate, the secretary should demarcate the areas that need to be considered. And then is uh, set up issue committees then everybody will be will, will, will know where to fall and he goes and participates and they take resolutions and the different uh, issue committees when they come here everybody will have been accommodated and uh, it will not take it will it will not take a lot of time by calling for amendments from the audience. Thank you. Yes. All right. Well, I'm going to take just two more questions and let's hear from our man from Texas. Thank you very much, Chair. Good afternoon. My name is Benson Kasue. I've come, I represent the East Africa Chamber of Commerce USA in Texas. And I, I'm here to represent the diaspora. As I look through this um, resolution that has been drafted, I see nothing that addresses our diaspora interest. We're very interested in the, con in the, in the area. That's why I'm here. We are interested in bringing investors here who can help build our, our region and bring more jobs to, to this area. But I'd like, us to, I'd like to see what it is that can be done to include our voices here because we are also a part of this region and we care deeply about it. We want to make the reach, this place better than we found it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. So I just said we're going to take two. My last one is going to be my question. And since we've been asked, since a lot of issues have come up, let me ask our resident TRA Deputy Commissioner General to, to shed some light a little bit. We've heard two issues and there are many more and you're lucky or unlucky to be the only uh, Deputy Commissioner from a Revenue Authority here. Uh, not speaking for you but speaking for the other countries that create challenges for business. Can you comment on the ladies issue about why it takes so long to cross a border and why the fees, for example, on lorries from other countries are different and they are so high. What's, what's going on? Because we're, we're partners here and uh, frequently the tax man gets accused of uh, killing the golden goose that lays the golden egg. Uh, what's happening with your discussions with your peers? What, what can we expect from the tax authorities in the region? Thank you, Chairman. Uh is now I'm hearing about his uh, rejection for entry. So I need to know specific why they rejected. Let me take it as a special case. I'll discuss with her and we'll see from at the border what are the reasons for them to make that decision. Uh, we have very good staff. They cannot just do without any reason. So we cannot rule out in the meeting let me take this as a special case 
but ours is to comply with the agreements that have been signed by Tanzania. So let me take it as a special case. Okay. All right. So if anybody, I don't know if there's anybody else who has a special case of their goods not clearing the border. Um, um, and I don't think there are. So if there is, he's, he's, he's here to uh, listen to any special cases. Okay. Um, that said, let me just ask you another question. Since as the tax, as the tax man and woman, your role is really to collect what the national government's policy is around taxation. What would you advise us as private sector to do? Because we find that there are many issues that we're discussing here that are against what we know is going to make us make, become more profitable, which means if we become more profitable, you collect more. How can we get that message across? What's the right way to advocate? It's not to go to you, perhaps, but where is it to go? How, we can, how can we get that done? Do we have a microphone here? And I think this is at the heart of so many of our issues um, that we face in East Africa. Uh, maybe two things. One, my suggestion is, uh, this is what I wanted to, is how do we get things done as agreed? I think this needs awareness. Uh, tax is a complicated issue. We might agree on this. Maybe that is a wine and has a tariff, but you need to see what type of that wine. If it is against on what has been agreed, it won't be treated the way how it is expected. So there is a need for awareness on that. And as revenue authorities on all partner states, uh, we need to engage the business people and clarify on everything that has been agreed in the protocol. That's what we can do. But second, as a business forum, I think there is a need for these partner states and the revenue authorities needs to collect more taxes for the government to service their countries. Uh, the good thing that could add value to the business summit like this, I think one of the agenda should be uh, to improve voluntary tax compliance. I'm not saying all of them, but there are some very few people who don't comply. And that's why you make these revenue authorities must, uh, they act smart to make sure we avoid uh, leakage of revenues. So if the summit could have the agenda for uh, making awareness on how the business people could voluntarily comply with the respective taxes, that could add value to the to the to the to this community. Okay. But otherwise, the awareness will do on that. All Thank right. you. There are a lot of things like Mr. Shah mentioned: blockchain, IoT, regional supply chains, digitized. That could help. Okay. You're still asking questions. There's Chakula outside. I just wanted to add. <laughs> okay, you. please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Kenneth Wagamunda, the Director General of Customs and Trade. I, I want to add on what the Commission of Customs, TRA, has said. I think we need to get clear about some of these issues, particularly when we talk about non-tariff barriers. And uh, we differentiate between a brokerage and also requirement to satisfy some certain procedures. We haven't reached the stage of yet of having borderless customs in the ESC. You still have to stop at the border and make a declaration. And sometimes you you find they will ask you A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and you have to satisfy that and go. What we have tried to do is to minimize the number of requirements and the number of stops so that like the border you don't stop twice you stop once and they verify your goods now this case of wines I'm aware about it. it came to my attention yesterday 
and immediately it came to my attention we contacted the border and immediately it was released it was released because you know exhibition goods are expected because wines attract excise duty and other internal taxes and therefore sometimes those processes need to be satisfied exhibition goods are supposed for a certain process and sometimes they may ask you a b c d e f g and normally what we do for exhibition we inform customs in advance like now we have an exhibition in rwanda and people who my friends are here they can testify the ones of small and medium enterprises we have now already written to customs to say that there will be exhibitors going to rwanda and they will be having their merchandise don't tax them ordinarily you are supposed to deposit a bond don't ask for a bond but let them make accountability of their goods because in normal circumstances actually those goods are not supposed to be sold if you sell them you are supposed to pay but in this circumstance if we had got the information there wouldn't be a problem but in some cases you find over also customs officers mm. that one sometimes is there but the normal requirements of a b c d should not be taken as an untariff barrier it is sometimes what you are required to go through and sometimes when you are going for these exhibitions i think it's better to start early so that by the time the exhibition is going to start you have already cleared through most of the time but nonetheless we will continue to do our best together with the revenue authorities and clear such kind of goods the second issue is the road user charge for trucks many times there has been an issue about this country charges a lot of road user charges for trucks while the other country does it now the road user charge is a charge that is institute that was instituted by under the commercial arrangement for which even tanzania remained a party under the transit arrangement now road user charge is calculated according to the kilometers you are going to travel from point a to point d to point b now if it is a long distance the amount is higher if it is a short distance the amount is lower if we are moving from katuna to kigari the amount is not like from mombasa to 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 camp to tunduma the charge is different however under esc there has been some flexibilities whereby for example tanzania and rwanda have agreed to harmonize the road user charge but legally it is supposed to be according to the distance now what we are doing under the transport uh, and communication uh, sector council is to get away from the commercial kind of arrangement and see what would be the appropriate charge that is harmonized since we are a customs union so that it is harmonized without basing it on the distance traveled i wanted to clarify that thank you okay thank you for that intervention that's that's helpful and of course what we all want is that the processes work and nobody has to call and have an emergency phone call cross, but, uh, trucks just cross the borders okay uh, i th i propose that we stop now unless there's anybody with a burning intervention what will happen next is we will go out for lunch. Uh, Honorable E.D. Maduki, is that correct? We're going to go out for lunch. The Why don't you come and tell me what's going to happen? Because we have many resolutions. I wrote down here about 12 of them that needed to be added. Yeah, why don't we, why don't we just propose, uh, why don't just we go straight, wind up, and go out at once?
na mtazamaji wa TBC1 kama unavyojionea katika television yako baadhi ya washiriki wakiwa miketi katika ukumbi huu wa mikutano kutoka hapa hotel ya Grand Melia iliyopo jijini Arusha. Kumbuka hii ni siku ya pili ya mkutano wa baraza la biashara Afrika Mashariki. Baraza hili linaundwa na taasisi za sekta binafsi kutoka nchi sita wanachama wa nchi hizi kimaanisha nchi ya Tanzania, nchi ya Kenya, Uganda, nchi ya Burundi, Rwanda pamoja na Sudan Kusini. Hii ni katika miaka maadhimisho ya miaka ishirini ya Jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki lakini pia miaka ishirini na miwili ya baraza hili la biashara la Afrika Mashariki. Yapo masuala mbalimbali ambayo yamezungumzwa katika siku ya leo ikiwemo maazimio kumi na saba yanayohusu yale yaliyozungumzwa. Unamwona hapo mwenyekiti wa baraza hili Nicholas aki moderate mkutano huu na ambapo amependekeza mpendekezo saba katika taarifa yake lakini pia yameongezwa maoni mengine mawili kutoka kwa wajumbe hawa walioketi hapa katika ukumbi huu wa Grand Melia hapa mkoa ni Arusha nikukumbushe tu kwamba huu ni mkutano mkuu wa biashara na uwekezaji Afrika Mashariki lakini pia ndo mwimili wa sekta binafsi katika kanda hii ya Afrika mashariki uh, na baadhi ya yale ambayo ilizungumzwa siku ya jana na baadhi ya maazimio ni pamoja na kuona taarifa za uwekezaji kwa wafanyabiashara kutoka katika nchi husika lakini pia kuuza kanda ya Afrika Mashariki kama kitu kimoja katika uwekezaji mwekezaji anapotaka kuja Afrika Mashariki akute taarifa kuhusiana na wanachama wote wa nchi hizi na aweze kuiangalia Afrika ya Mashariki kama kitu kimoja hususan katika biashara na uwekezaji. Ingawa ni mchana na kufanya biashara hao wakisubiri basi yale mapendekezo mapya kuingizwa katika dokezo lile na kisha kusainiwa kwa pamoja. Na baadhi ya maoni ya washiriki wa mkutano huu ni pamoja na kwamba maazimio hayo yaweze kutengenezwa na kuwezwa kutekelezwa katika nchi husika ili basi ili yale waliyozungumza yaweze kuleta tija na kurahisisha ufanyaji biashara katika nchi za kanda ya Afrika Mashariki. Mkutano huo ulifunguliwa hapo jana na waziri wa mambo ya nje na Af wa uhusiano wa Afrika Mashariki wa Tanzania Profesa Palamagamba Kabudi kwa niaba ya Rais wa Tanzania Dr. John Magufuli. ukumbi huu wa Grand Melia Hotel jijini Arusha ni wafanyabiashara lakini pia washiriki wa mkutano huo wakisubiri basi yale mapendekezo mapya kumi na mawili ambayo wameyatoa baada ya kuwasilishwa kwa mapendekezo yaliyotokana na kikao kilichofanyika siku ya jana na asubuhi ya siku ya leo kuweza kuingizwa basi katika yale ambayo wamependekeza kutokana na mkutano huu wa biashara na uwekezaji uliofanyika hapa Grand Melia jijini Arusha Mkutano huu ulikuwa na mambo mbalimbali lakini pia uliweza ku umekwisha uliandaliwa pamoja na sekta baraza la biashara Afrika Mashariki lakini ni mkusanyiko wa sekta binafsi kutoka nchi wanachama kwa hapa Tanzania ikiwa imeandaliwa kwa upande mmoja na taasisi ya sekta binafsi TPSF The documents ready we've added about 10 12 um, that you that you have uh, contributed to the document and we will now invite the minister to uh, co-sign the document with me and then we'll be free to leave and so we invite you all to witness this signing ceremony with uh, Dr Biruta 
and then we are done. Let me also say, once we are done, uh, Bwana Edi, are you going to tell about what's happening later? Kama nilivyo kuambia mpenzi mtazamaji tayari yale mapendekezo mengine kumi na mawili ambayo yaliongezwa na washiriki wa mkutano huu yamekushaongezwa katika yale kumi na saba yaliyopatikana kutokana na mkutano huu wa siku mbili na hivi sasa mwenyekiti wa baraza hili la biashara la Afrika Mashariki Nicholas Nesbit pamoja na waziri wataweka watatiliana saini yale makubaliano ambayo yametokea kutokana na mkutano huu tumsikilize msharheshaji throughout this afternoon hopefully now we are satisfied with what has come out of the two days of the east african business and investment summit very pertinent issues very real issues coming out now and this certainly deserves a round of applause as we have a document that holds us accountable, holds this region and community accountable to moving business forward. One more round of applause. The EABC chair and Dr. Biruta as well, signing and committing the ministers and the business community to this resolution. And there you have it, the handshake between the two, commemorating this moment. Thank you once again. Our work certainly is cut out for the business community moving forward. Wonderful. So we're heading into lunch now. Uh, we have two buffet stations just outside in the foyer area, but we also passed out vouchers uh, to our other delegates. If you have a voucher, you can head over to the Saba Saba restaurant in the main hotel, after which we will have a cocktail at 4 o'clock. The cocktail will be at 4 would be four o'clock here, okay, right here in the plenary area, four o'clock. And we request also that you come in some African attire. If you have a dress, a suit, or something that commemorates, and someone is saying we should have told, we could actually support the locals with something that would commemorate that as well. Exhibition is also still going on. Kindly make your way there when you have time. We will convene back here at 4 p.m. Thank you. barabara kabisa mpenzi mtazamaji wa TBC1 kama unavyojionea katika television yako baadhi ya wadau waliohudhuria mkutano huu wa biashara baraza la biashara la Afrika Mashariki wakielekea nje kupata chakula cha mchana lakini pia kwenda kutembelea wafanye biashara na wajasiria mali waliofika hapa wakileta biashara zao mbali mbali katika mkutano huu wa siku mbili ilikuwa ni kuadhimisha miaka ishirini ya jumuiya ya Afrika Mashariki lakini na mchango uh, wa sekta binafsi katika ku ongeza mahusiano katika nchi hizi wanachama lakini pia kujadili fursa za biashara na uwekezaji katika nchi wanachama wa Afrika Mashariki kukuletea matangazo haya ulitangazaji wako Gloria Michael lakini pia